With gray skies blanketing the city for months on end, Seattle might seem like the worst location for a solar-powered house. But one home on Bainbridge Island shows how even here, the sun can provide all the power you need, and then some. Russ Hamlet is an architect of 20 years. He's married and has a nine-year-old son. John Lang installed solar energy systems. He's married with a daughter. Russ and John teamed up to build this home. They're passionate about sustainable building and energy conservation. Their challenge was how to build a house that generates all the energy it needs. The solution, Bainbridge Island's first net zero home. A net zero home is a house that generates as much energy as it uses. Gentlemen. Steve Thomas. Hi, Steve. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. John Lang. Good to meet you, John. Nice to meet you, and you're Russ, right? Yes. So you guys have a net zero house that you put yeah. together. Yes. Cool. We're excited about it. Let's go check out the solar panels. Let's go. Situated on seven acres, this 1,800 square foot house features solar panels that generate electricity and solar tubes that heat hot water. The house is energy self-sufficient and can both send and receive electricity to and from the utility company. So this house feeds energy to the grid? Right, yeah. And then buys energy from the grid? Yeah. Cool. It's designed to be uh, net zero. So this is not a leech on the electricity system. Right, right. A actually. leech on the planet. It's helping the neighbors out. Yeah, that's great. As an architect, did you design the house around the panels, or did you design the panels around the house, if you know <laughs> what I mean? A little bit of both. I looked at what we needed for an angle, an, that, angle. an ideal angle that we could have for those panels. Came up with a roof pitch that also worked with construction. <laughs> And that makes a handsome house, too. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good-looking roof. Yes, on. yes. Let's go look and see how you feed power back into the grid. So you've got two meters here, a cell and a bi. One's a, a bi-directional, which um, measures the back and forth. And one is the production meter, which measures the cumulative output of the lifetime of the array. So back to the concept of net zero. At the end of the year, the, the ebb and flow of this meter should be zero. Right. Got it. Let's go check out the panel and the inverter. Inside this room, inverters transform solar energy to AC electricity. But when it's overcast, like today, it can be tough on a net zero home. I wouldn't imagine we're producing a lot of power right now. I was hoping maybe a little bit later, Steve, if you're still here, we can look at the meter. It when may the sun be, you know, pokes out mm -hmm. a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. We might be kicking okay. it back the other way. So. Okay. I'll hang out for that. Okay. <laughs> you want to put some money on it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Have you heard the weather forecast? Yeah, I think we got a bet yeah. going here. I've got uh, about $10 in my pocket. Deal. Three-way deal here. Okay. <laughs> One or two powers. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that meter. Enough talk about power. Let's check out the house. Russ, the architect, designed a long and narrow floor plan, 20 feet by 40 feet, basically one room wide, so sunlight can reach deep into the interior. Rooms are compact, so they don't waste energy on heating, but there's still an open feeling. Kitchen's right in the middle, I mean, I like how it's blocked out. There's a lot of natural light in the house, went with lighter colors, warm light colors. Small house feels large. One question with a net zero home is how much wear and tear can the solar panels take and still remain reliable? It's a question we set out to answer. They're built to withstand hail and baseballs being hit at them. And but it's also going to be scientific, so we need to take a baseline reading on how much power the panel is generating. So we're at about 23 volts. That's enough to power three 60-watt light bulbs. But that's just one of the 32 panels on the house. The big question for somebody buying one of these is, will my kid hurt one with a baseball? So we start. <laughs> That's you know, some kid is going to like, think, look, I mean, somebody's going to go very close. Ooh. Too hard. <sighs> I was hoping it lasts a little longer. I got quite an arm. The question is, is it producing any power? Even broken. Look at that. <laughs> it's actually still producing power. 20, almost 22 volts. What was it before? 23.18 or something? Yeah. So even breaking the glass didn't affect the performance, but it took quite a bit to break the glass. 
But that's just human inflicted damage. What about nature? So this simulates the eruption of Mount Rainier. One, two, three. The big question is, can I recharge my iPod? Two volts. Still, that's amazing. It's still working. I mean, we smashed the snot out of it, and it's still producing electricity. That's impressive. Yeah, that really is. The fun is not over, however, folks. We get to move on to evacuated tubes. Evacuated tubes. So these are for hot water. Right. They're called evacuated because there's no air in the tubes. It's a vacuum, which makes these tubes very good conductors of heat, unless they're broken. Big storm, no hot water. You don't want to put one of these arrays out next to your soccer field or your, where your kid's going to play baseball. While we've been testing, how's our net zero house been doing? Has it managed to feed energy back to the grid on a cloudy day? There we go. There it is. <laughs> Pay up, pal. Look at that. <laughs> back into the Volkswagen okay. camp. <laughs> Get the Grateful Dead going. Job, Let's right? go. Russ and John wanted to create a net zero home. They needed to install a solar energy system that could generate electricity even under the most extreme conditions. The home they built is energy efficient as well as warm and inviting. And it proves you can go solar in Seattle. <laughs>